Let's make a TIE Fighter. Okay, let's make a TIE Fighter. New. Don't save. So, to make a TIE Fighter, what do we need? Obviously, we need one of these, right? And we should do it inside here. Next, we need some uh, body to like really make it awesome. Oh, Interstellar and Rose Cone. No, not going to do that. Oh, Antimatter Containment Device. Not going to do that. Sounds cool. Not going to work. Oh, the Daedalus Propulsion System. Wow, Interstellar's added a whole bunch of things that I should really go back and use one of these days. Okay, I can't... i got to be careful. I keep wanting to use the scrolly wheel thing, and the scrolly wheel thing is just not working for me. We're not going to power this thing by ion engines before anybody is like, but you're not using ion engines. I'm like, no, no, that's Star Wars. Star Wars does weird things that doesn't make any sense in terms of reality. I'm looking for the tank, uh, what do you call it? Oh, you know what? They may not have one of those. They may not have the exact thing that I need. So instead, I'm going to go for structural elements. Structural. Nope, not me. Okay. Well, there's nothing in that, but that'll be a decent way to do it. And then we'll stick an engine on the back there. Technically, we should actually stick two engines on there, right? A magneto, uh, open cycle, gas... Wow, so... Wait a second. Open cycle, gas core reactor, plasma nozzles, plasma wake fueled accelerator. Oh, yeah. You know, ve vector engine. I wonder if they have a nuclear saltwater rocket. Those things are crazy. I mean, like, in terms of crazy, dirty drive systems, nuclear salt wa water rockets are way up there in the holy crap, I can't believe somebody thought this was a good idea. Uh, competitions, stakes, whatever. Okay, we're going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is just slide these things inside the body a bit so that they... You know, they kind of look like there's two of them. Okay, so now we need some wings. Wings and things. Wings and things. Probably should... Should I go for the structural thing or should I put some fuel in it? Damn it. This flickering UI is... Frustrating. Yeah, let's just do this for now. And then I definitely need these. So the only thing is that I, I suspect that a proper TIE fighter design will be... Well, for a start, that's going to be too big. So I need to make this shorter. Let's do this. I mean, everybody's made TIE fighters and in Kerbal before, haven't they? Uh, and then structural panels. <sighs> yeah, maybe I should use structural wings instead. Hold on, do we have structural wings? Do I have procedural wings sitting around? I do not see any procedural wings. Oh, wait, we have a Sky Ranger. Oh, that's interesting. I, we, I didn't see this Sky Ranger stuff earlier. Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. We'll survive. Should I try... Ugh, so frustrating. Yeah, let's do that. Let's actually put like a circular square... Let's put the square, square thing in. Square thing... Two by two structural panel. There, okay, so that's where the wings are going to connect, and now we need to make a wing system which is big enough. You know what? I think we're definitely just going to shrink it down to this. Ooh, is somebody trying to invoke Cthulhu here, or is that uh, Norwegian? I mean, when it comes to death metal, both could be the case. You can actually, I hear apparently. That uh, Norwegian is one of the best languages for summoning, uh, you know, eldritch horrors. 
Okay, so... Hmm. Let's do that there. I keep wanting to drag the camera around with a set middle mouse button, and that really is confusing me. I'm going to stop complaining about this sometime, but not until I've properly complained about it. I need to complain about it a whole lot more before I'm really done complaining about this thing, because I have a lot of complaining to do about the quality of the of this thing. Okay, so grab this, and now I need to duplicate it, and again we'll attach it on the bottom here. Okay, let's move down. Aha! Grab it, move it, just move it this way a little. Oh, look at that. You see, this is starting to take shape. This is totally starting to take shape, right? So now I need to duplicate these again. Man, there's so much duplication going on. Take that. Slide it up. Now the only thing is, I'm pretty sure this whole thing will be aerodynamically unstable because the center of lift is going to be in front of the center of mass. So I need to figure out some way. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to shift the, the mass of the thing forwards just to try and help with this. But we'll figure that out once we're actually trying to crash the thing. Uh, there we go. It's looking slightly better. You know, one thing I could do actually is add more wings at the back, right? But let's let's actually just fit in these wing connector parts and see how they look. If I can figure out the rotation. There we go. That's one. And that's another. Then we need a slightly smaller one. That's this one here. Okay. Oh. Gonna move the camera higher so I can get this angle figured out. Slide this out. Okay, so we're almost there. The proportions aren't quite right. <laughs> uh, but we're getting there. I should probably make that thing a little smaller. And on top of this, what I'm gonna do actually for stability here right, is I'm going to add a bunch of, like, little radial... I'm going to add... What I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to call them, like, control manifolds or something. Uh, where are... Like, some control surfaces, like this, right? So if we attach these, and we attach, like, a... Ring. There we go. Eight of them? And what we're going to do... No, no, that's wrong. We, I messed it up. I messed it up. Again, radial X, and then two of those, and then lots of those. So that's not the button. That's the button. So do that, right? And then the next thing we'll do is we'll just rotate them outwards. And by rotating them outwards, we're gonna get some more like we're gonna basically putting a tail fin on it. That's the idea, right? Uh, why not track on a control wheel? Possibly, but I'm just trying to think out how to make these things all work as best as possible. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try and grab these and just slide them backwards a bit for 
you know, because by moving these backwards, we might move the center of mass into the correct place. So let's see, center of thrust is okay. Center of mass is really hard to tell. And center of lift. Well, that's interesting. Die fighter! Because this one fights ties. So let's save. Okay. So actually, before we launch, I'm going to rotate this thing upwards. There. That's us. We're perfect. We're ready to go. Save, launch. Oh, man. I think this is going to be an early stream because, frankly, I'm not happy with anything that's happened tonight. It's all been a whole bunch of rubbish. I'm going to slow the thrust down just a bit. There, look. I've got a very bad TIE fighter. Stability of this thing is going to be terrible, as I've suggested. Because center of mass, center of lift kind of thing. Yeah, it's just going to do this. This is what happens with most TIE fighters, because there's just no way to make them not want to flip around. Ah, there we go. Ah! <laughs> Hey! At least it survived! <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, I should revert that flight uh, to the space plane hangar. And what I'll do is I'm going to add some flaps to, to the back of this thing here, right? So, let's actually grab that and see if we can fix it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you guys who uh, came here, you're going to get to see this. I'm not going to bother reposting this to YouTube because... This has been, quite frankly, a pretty dull and uninteresting stream, and I have not had chance to listen to any of the amazing things you guys are saying. I'm sure you all have fantastic comments that are really explaining how best for me to fix this thing. Uh, you're telling jokes. You are the life of the party, but all that will be lost. Like tears in rain. Time to fly. Oh, die. Come on, a little better. Yes, there we go. I'm just going to move this down a bit more. Oh, crikey. You thing. Put more boosters on it. Are you kidding? Okay, so now, uh, once again, back with the incredible Rhyme Animal, public enemy number one. Yeah, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is add little flaps here as well, like horizontal flaps, so I can perhaps get some vertical control. So these big ones, airplane control surfaces, I'm just going to stick ones there. So I'm going to, I should do a Darth Vader one, right? Because the Darth Vader ones had those. Then Grab it. Oh. Grab it, I said. Then slip. Slide. That's looking better. But I think as soon as this fuel runs out, the thing becomes unstable. Is space aids a real thing? Uh, yes, they have grown aids. Uh, they've built an aids, like... They tried to work with AIDS in space. It was science. They did a lot of good science. Lots of science is done in space. Kate Rubens, of course, did a lot with science in space. She was very much uh, working with, you know, things that were potentially dangerous. Okay, let's try that. Lunch. And... Oh, yes! Nice! I think this is a little more stable. It just has the wrong sound effect. It has, like, yeah, the pitch control on it is really weak. 
but the yaw control is pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure that, yeah, as soon as this thing goes unstable, I think it becomes unflyable. Let's let's see if I can bring it back under control. Oh, yeah, I got it back on. Oh no, I'm losing again. Again. Yeah, it doesn't want to pull out of this dive, but if I roll like that, and then, yes! <laughs> Why don't the TIE Fighters ever do that in the movies? It would make so much more sense for them to use their increased aerodynamics. Space aerodynamics, obviously. Okay. Let me see. If I can just turn this on its side. Oh, crap. I'm trying to just push it ever so slightly up. Oh. That's the wrong way. <laughs> hey, perfect landing once again. I think that, uh... I think the, they would be totally proud of that. <sighs> okay, so... I think we should do the Darth Vader TIE Fighter, right? The Darth Vader TIE Fighter, the TIE Advanced, right? It does some different things. First of all, obviously, everyone notices the, the wings carving. But there's also some stuff here. Like, there's a, like a pattern, or the, not a pattern, there's a, a, a wing surface, right? So if I slide the... Uh, hold on. If I take... Actually, I'm going to take these out completely first. And it needs something... Ooh, I wonder what that, how that looks. Oh, crap. That looks pretty good if I can just attach it the right way. I mean, it looks good. I don't know if it's going to fly good. Ooh, kind of liking that look of that thing. Totally not realistic, but whatever. Let's try attach. Oh, no, it doesn't want to attach to those things. Damn you! Damn you all to hell! Yeah, I need something further back. Let's just grab this thing. Yes. Ooh, I like that. I like the look of that. That's really interesting. Let's actually just add one of those fins back in. That could look pretty cool, actually. Yeah, procedural wings uh, would be great, except that apparently I don't have it installed. Because I don't see procedural wings here, so I must have not installed it despite installing a ton of other things you know the other thing i could add actually would be air brakes now i think about it air brakes would be excellent from a stability standpoint we can just drop them on the rear and then this this thing is really annoying me <laughs> i will never ever install this mod again and again, it's not because it's a bad mod, but because I'm not used to the mod, and therefore it is highly frustrating when I'm using it. I'm sure the mod developer did all sorts of wonderful things to make that happen, and should be respected for his or her very important work on the subject of moving Kerbal's stuff around in a more sane way. But, not for me. Procedural Wings is a mod which lets you design the wings in great detail. Okay, uh, let's actually put on the infinite propellant at least temporarily and see how fast this thing goes. Ready? Oh, you know what I should do? Now I think about it. There was one other thing I wanted to do. Ah, oh, never mind. We'll just fly this thing. Ready? It's bit set. Go! Oh! <laughs> Well, that didn't work quite as well as I'd expected. <laughs> Let's try reverting that to launch one more time. Yes. 
Yeah, you know what? I... What was it like working with Anne McCaffrey? She was very, you know, she was very cool, very interested. Oh, what the heck is that doing? Why is that at uh, that angle? That wasn't the angle I asked for. I asked for, like, a scene thing. What are you doing? Oh, man, now this is really confused again. Uh... Oh, you know what? I probably... Yeah, this thing needs to go in, and we get a duplicate now. I'm going to attach this. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay. <sighs> yeah, you can make the wings pretty much any shape you like, so you can make arbitrary stuff. It's actually... A useful trick if you're wanting to build boxes of things. <laughs> uh, let's uh, revert to the space plane hangar. So in here, I shall make this thing point upwards a little. It would be kind of cool if I could make this thing work, but I think, I think actually what's happened is I've made it more stable by moving the wing surface back, which means that it will tend to pitch down when it starts to get, you know, slow. So instead, I should just grab the whole thing and rotate it upwards just a bit so that we can get airborne. There we go. Ugh. <sighs> I like how people are like, oh, maybe you should try launching at more of an angle. I don't think, uh, maybe I shall. You know what I should also do? Is enable infinite fuel. Look at that, yes. Nice. I like the way that that is crashes so fast that it completely annihilates the runway. What is that thing that survived the crash? I've got to say, that survived and that survived. That's nice. Let's revert flight to launch once again. <laughs> I'm not listening to. I'm not able to keep up with any of these Twitch viewers. Not because I'm a bad person, but just simply because I am, you know, a YouTuber. Wonder how fast this thing will go before it breaks. Well, looks like we picked up a bit of a shimmy. Wonder if I if I try to turn at this speed, I wonder what happens. At least I can keep the nose up with this thing. Hey, we're totally making it to the second runway, huh? Oh. It does seem, I've got to say, it does seem to be preferentially turning one way versus another. <laughs> that... That is a really interesting maneuver there. Let's let's see if I can use that maneuver for, you know, profit. No, it just as soon as it does that, it just wants to flip the heck out. I gotta try and make this thing get somewhere. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is not gonna survive. <sighs> Almost made it to the island though. I did not intend to do that. Let's uh, see if I can put some more control on this thing. I don't know, It's it's really hard. Are people, like, expecting me to reply in chat? Because you know what? I don't have time for that. It's not that I don't love you guys, but 
I literally don't have time for that. Let's try doing this. <laughs> oh man, it's 11.15. I really need to get some sleep. I'm getting so, so tired. Let's just put like some more stuff like that to make it fly straight. Oh yeah, we get a, a launch happening in a few minutes, right? Ah, uh, let's let's uh let me see if I can find this. Do, 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 do. We we have a we have stuff going on. I gotta find it. And that means, yeah, let's, we have a real life rocket, I believe, launching, assuming everything is going to plan. Here we go. Okay, um, theater mode, that's good. Now, you know what I should do is go to... Aha! Look, we have live monitor thing. We can watch this. This is, of course, completely not right. You can watch it right here. We can discuss... This is one of the best-looking launch sites in the world, I have to say. Does anyone speak Japanese? Go Japan! There's no like timers or anything. It says it like T minus three minutes, maybe? I don't know. We're watching a stream through a stream, but we're watching it together. We're feeling like... I have no idea what she's saying. It's gonna watch, launch Himawari number nine. Himawari's been doing like these amazing images of the, you know, of weather systems and stuff over the Pacific. It does sound like a countdown, but then it stops. Two minutes. Nope. She's just counting down and they start like counting down with several minutes to go before the launch. No, I don't want things to go wrong. I want this thing to fly like a pro. Himawari is Jebediah in Japanese. Totally. You know, so the Japanese rockets, they were really interesting because oh, the early rockets did not have any missile guidance on them because they were not allowed to because of arms treaties. So they built rockets that could essentially fly into space using passive stabilization systems. Yeah, uh-huh. This is super easy to replicate in KSP. It's just like a couple of strap-ons and yeah, just space rockety thing. Seventy seconds. Oh, look at that! Wow! Look at that river of fog just flowing down. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, this is definitely not getting posted on YouTube because this video is just so meh. Strap on boosters. It's a very nice looking launch site. Oh look, we have the, the burn. Oh, engine igniting. And off it goes. Yes. 
Nippon! Oh, no, okay, so yeah, those are solid rocket boosters on the exterior. Look at it, it's turning really fast. That's it, through the clouds. Are we going to see anything else? Do you have any other cameras on this whole thing? There it goes! Fly, you fools! Fly! Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. I, I don't really uh, have any numbers on this particular launch vehicle. You know what I do like, though, is that they actually have YouTube comments. Which many of these video streams, they don't allow YouTube comments in real time. So it's really kind of like a very quiet and sedate experience. Whereas Japan, they're all just like super excited and people are talking and whatever. That is, it is a very quick launch, definitely. The solid rocket boosters are pretty, I mean, it does look like a really Kerbal launch in terms of the uh, strap-ons and everything being producing a lot of thrust. So... I'm guessing they're gonna, they're saying that the SRBs jettison at 107 seconds after launch. I'm reading this, but I'm not really clear. So there's the timer, 93 seconds. Oh, they're zooming out. Nice. They're using Google Earth for this whole thing. And Windows. For engine... Engine shutdown? And engines away. Or sorry, not engine. SRBs jettison. You don't really shut those things down. The rocket is just fast because it has a pretty powerful thrust to weight ratio. So the next step is 239 seconds when the main uh, engine cuts out and then they'll do a stage separation. Oh look, the whole... <laughs> I like how the stream is literally being handled in the same way that I'm handling the stream, like someone just dragging the window around. That's funny. Apparently I've also made people addict to Shenzhen IO, which I, I have to say, I really love that game. I'm disappointed that nobody watches me play that game. It's so sad because it's one of my favourite things to do right now. So there it's heading out east over into the Pacific. And this will be going, I, if it's Himawari, I'm guessing it's going for a geostationary orbit. I could be wrong. Do people put science on the moon regularly? Not regularly. Most of the uh, satellites are going into low Earth orbit or geostationary orbit. I'm just trying to see, is there like a... We have an altitude and we have a speed here, right? And I guess they're accelerating at a bit over 2 Gs right now. We're approaching burnout in about 30 seconds. I have no idea what you just said. Oh, I heard kilometer. That sounded like familiar. Never mind. Okay, 15 seconds or so to go. And we're the acceleration is now like 26, 30 meters per second per second. And main engine cut out. Stage, oh, oh, wait a second. No, it's not main engine cut out. It was a fairing separation. So I guess, I guess we got to wait for main engine cut out. That's fairing sap. I can't read any of this stuff. It's all in Japanese. I'm totally preparing to wave at it as it flies over. I can't see anything else in the flight path telling me. Okay, so the next spot is 399 seconds. That's a long way for that main engine to run. Is that really like... That's 1 slash 2, so I'm guessing that's staying... That's stage 1 uh, shutdown and separation. The H2A is flying normally. <laughs> Beating Shenzhen IO just means that you get to say that you survived another Zaktronics game. Seriously, I, I got mad, so mad at uh, Infinifactory. I love that as well, but I I got so mad. I would get halfway through a puzzle and then realize I had to move everything. 
Mm. Yeah, look at the meters per second that's jumping up. It's like 3,300. 3, yeah, it's making big jumps in terms of speed here. So because it's burned out so much mass, it's moving really, really, really quickly. They said normally, which is their translation, not nominally. Oh, someone might be suggesting that the 1 slash 2 might mean be the point where they cut throttle in half. Which, I mean, they might throttle these things down, but nobody... People don't generally build rockets that throttle, right? That's the thing. Throttling engines isn't something that's done. They tend to run them at full thrust. Like, even the Apollo space, uh, you know, the Saturn V... They would just shut down one of the engines once the acceleration got too high. They didn't shut. They didn't throttle the engines. I'm sure Japan ha used to have their own numbers, but then they realized that, you know, at least agreeing on Arabic numerals kind of helped. Uh -huh. Three hundred. We get ten seconds to go. Let's find out. I think it's going to be a stage separation event. Oh. Oh, yeah, the engine shut down a few seconds before that, and now they'll do a stage sep. 399. Bang! And now the second stage is going to light up, and that will carry it into orbit. So it's got another 3 kilometers per second or so to go. Well, slightly more than that. And that will get it up to orbital velocity. I'm going to guess second stage engine first time ignition. So the fact that they're saying first time ignition implies I'm guessing this is going to a geostationary orbit. This is I haven't read up anything about this, so I'm guessing Himawari is going to a geostationary orbit, so they're gonna fire that, it'll get into a circular orbit, and then when it hits the equator they will relight the second stage and that'll push it up to its geostationary transfer orbit. There, look at that. Oh we get video of the SRB jettison. So we can see the clouds from above. Beautiful. Very nice. They must have they must be using a real audio server or something. This is absolutely yeah, I think this is a weather sat going the Himawari videos have been amazing. Payload fairing jettison. Bingo! That is beautiful. That's fantastic. Okay, and back to the thing. Main screen, turn on. Yeah, exactly. I think they just didn't have real-time update for all these things. How's the acceleration? Yeah, the acceleration is much lower now. Maybe 10 meters per second per second. Maybe about 1G acceleration. So it'll take another 5 minutes or so to get to, uh, like, G GTO transfer or whatever to get to its parking orbit before going to GTO. Why is there a 30 second de delay in my broadcast? Because there just is. I think YouTube chat is just... Yeah. Oh, now we get a replay! Yes, look at it go. Watch those umbilicals drop away. Will we get to see the umbilicals drop away? No, we're not going to. We're just going to see these things light up and then off they go. Engine burns and boom. Oh yeah, the umbilicals come away. See that? That's like mad skills. Well, that's really nice. I like the way that it kind of just gets consumed by the clouds. <sighs> okay, well that's been successful. That's enough of that. Fare thee well. Bon voyage. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. And may your transfer to geostationary orbit be a safe one. Yeah, so look, it's going to shut down the second stage engine at about 726 uh, seconds so yeah two minutes from now 
and then it will basically cruise around until it reaches the equator and then they will relight the engines for the transfer burn. And that's all I need to know. Let's close this down. And did I want to try, did I do something to this to make it fly better? I sure hope I did. Yeah, it needs more stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. How many G's could a person re resist? Uh, it depends on how long. Instantaneous G-forces of over 100 G's have been survived with minimal injury. But, uh, yeah, higher G's, less so. Okay, so to make this thing fly, revert flight to space plane hangar. So let's take this. Uh, I'm going to slide these back a little to see if I can make it more stable. I'm not going to rebuild the Japanese rocket because I need to get some sleep. I'm feeling like crap. Ooh. Oh, look. Now it flies a whole lot better, right? I'm going to slow down, right? So now that I've moved these wings back, I actually have decent authority with these. See that? So I'm going to totally try flying this somewhere. Now, yeah, now it's flying like a pro. Just got to get that nose up just a bit. It does not have much in the way of pitch authority. Let, let me say that. Ugh. Upside down in a rocket launch. That was one of the challenges many, many moons ago on Reddit. You had to launch a rocket that was uh, inverted. Okay, so we're going to fly by the tower here. So actually, when I turn it like this, I, I feel I actually get more control. It, because the these you know, horizontal wings, these solar panels, actually provide some some lift. Quite a lot of lift. I mean, they're wings, right? So like, yeah, bang, turns hard, turns hard. So I'm going to throttle this down. We're going to aim for... Okay, you know what? I'm going to aim for the tower. Let's let's just see if I can glide it into a landing like this. <laughs> this is not how TIE fighters are supposed to land, but given aerodynamics, it's the most logical way for them to land. Uh, uh oh, I'm heading for the tower. Let's see if I can split it. Oh, brilliant! Brilliant! Uh Hey look <laughs> Oh man That was yeah that was hilarious <laughs> Well I think I might do some highlights from this but this is about as far as I'm going tonight See you guys. Uh, sorry about this stream being utterly terrible, but ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, yes. Um, boy. See you guys, seriously. Fly safe! Um, just trying to find it standby. <laughs>